Lincoln Gamain to uh, do another sign and as you can see bloody Corona's bloody playing havoc again but anyway so we've got these masks on while we're driving in the car anyway so uh, we're heading down to finish off another couple of mobile signs that we would have seen in the last video we've done two of the four we've still got two to go so uh, yeah we're going to go down there today and start prepping them marking them out um, get ready to do a bit of undercoating and um, if it doesn't rain a bit of top coating so stay tuned talk soon Righto, we're back on um, site down here in Gamain, and as you can see, the um, I'm assuming the council's trimmed all the trees up, so you can actually get a real good view of the the mobile signs that we restored a month or so ago. Uh, where we're up to today is turning our attention to the front of the building, where there's two different versions of mobile or uh, vacuum oil company signs. Um, the one on the left is going to be very similar to the ones that we've already done. But this one on the right is got a bit more of a bluey sort of purpley background with a bit of yellow writing so today we're going to get in here and mark it all out try and find all the old names and words mark them out of texture you can see the mobile up there so we'll mark all them out so we can um try and save all the detail before we start scraping it back prepping it and getting ready for painting so stay tuned G'day everyone, I want you to meet Angus, or Gus. Angus is our new apprentice and um, he's getting a bit of a taste of what it's like to restore these old signs. So um, yeah, here we are on site. As you can see, it's not the best weather again, but we're out here. It's a bit bit fresh, but we're dealing with it. Right, hey, before I get Angus to sand all this back and prep it all, I just wanted to show you a bit of the colour that, that we've found before it all disappears. I don't know if you can how well it's going to show up on the camera but it's a bit of a, a bluey purpley color that was on the background and at some stage the silver frost has been painted over the top and you'll see in the letters see the hints of yellow so the plan is to prep it all sand it back um, and then we'll paint the background and then there's a border that separates it like on the other mobile ones It'll get a coat of yellow and all the lettering will cop a coat of yellow as well. So I just thought I'd show you before Angus starts sanding off all that white silver frost and gets rid of all the flaky paint. So cool. So we have got all the um, lettering marked out. We had a little bit of trouble um, working out what the second name was for this sign. But thanks to Howard Holgate and he's he done a bit of research and he's worked it out. So as you can see there... I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It was Woolnow, Woolnoff, and Barnsdale. Local agents for. Switch out one sec there, Gussie. Vacuum Oil Co. And down the bottom, PTY LTD. Yeah, so Woolnow, Barnsdale, and Barnsdale, local agents for. Vacuum Oil Company PTY LTD And I'll, um, I haven't quite finished this one so I'll come back to it What Angus is doing now is going along and getting rid of all the flaky paint That's on this sign As you can see We don't want any of that left on there because obviously Our paint will just fall off if we paint straight over it So Angus is going through and scuffing everything up and getting rid of all the loose paint and uh, getting ready, we'll wash it down. Um, yeah, and then we'll be ready to start slapping some paint on. The 
sun has finally come out here in Gamayne today, it's a little bit too late. I've only got about an hour left today before it starts to get too cold, but anyway, um, we've got everything marked out. Angus is just finishing up prepping that side of the sign. Now, I'm not sure if you can see that, but this one here reads JF Dunn, Agents 4, Mobile, Power Kerosene. So I think it's going to be very similar to the ones on the other end. Um, I think that little bit of a border that runs up to the top will be red. The timber fascia will be red and the trim down the other side will be red. The background will be silver and the text will be black. Just like around this side. So I'll make it blend in with that. But obviously the one that Angus is working on will be um, that purpley blue colour with yellow so it should um should look awesome when it's done can't wait to start slapping some paint on right hey we're just about to knock off for the day we've pretty much got everything ready to come back tomorrow and start putting paint on we just thought we would just put a bit of sample color on just to see how it looks and that sun's duck behind a tree so it's probably a little bit darker than looks a bit darker than what it actually is but we'll wait until that dries and um have a look in the morning and yeah, we might have to slightly alter the, the colour to, to suit but we'll work that out tomorrow once it's all dry but it's going to be something like that, a bit of a purpley blue with some nice bright yellow letters. Anyway, hopefully it doesn't rain tomorrow and we'll, we'll be back here on site. See you then. Good morning everyone. We are back on site down here in Gamain. It's a bit better day today. There's not too many clouds or rain about, but it's still pretty fresh and a bit of a breeze. Uh, yesterday afternoon when we left, we were putting on that bit of a colour sample. And here's a good example why you can't push um, painting acrylics too late into the afternoon. I think it was about half past three when we were calling, uh, calling stumps yesterday. But we thought we'd test that, put that um, sample colour on. That's with the sun on it, so... It just goes to show that once that moisture comes in and the cool air comes in at night and sits on it, that it doesn't quite dry properly. It hasn't run too bad, but still, you would think being water-based that would have dried pretty quick, but yeah, that's just why you can't push these things too late into the afternoons this time of year. Because um, once that cool change comes, and then at night it gets a bit of uh, frost on it or whatever, it just doesn't dry, then it starts to run and then it's a disaster. So anyway, uh, Angus is gonna jump up there now and just give this wall a quick wipe down. And then I'm going to get the brushes out and we're going to start putting some colour on. I'm pretty happy with that um, that blue. Now I've seen it in, in the full sunlight. So yesterday it was in the shadows. It looked a bit dark, but I think it's going to be right. So anyway, let's go. Get the brushes out. G'day everyone, we're just finishing up um, on day for day two. It's about three o'clock, so we've decided to um, pull the pin, even though the sun's still out, but as you would have seen in the last snippet of the video, that um, if it doesn't dry properly and that dew comes in tonight, the paint just doesn't dry properly and ends up running, so better to be safe than sorry. Uh, this is where we're up to so far. Um, yeah, so all the blues one coated. We've, we've found all the letters and wording and got it all marked out. The next stage is to we're going to put some undercoat on on the lettering, a bit of an off yellow, and then it's going to get a couple of coats of yellow, and then we'll second coat all the blue. And this one here will be done. But you're starting to see the sort of impact that this signage has or would have had back in the day, when all these buildings along here had these sort of signs on them. We're just opposite the train tracks here. So you imagine going past on the passenger train as you're going through Gamain and all these old buildings had all this sort of sign writing on it, it was pretty good advertising, so 
Um, one thing I will say, we're probably doing it the hard way here by cutting in around the letters. It would be a lot easier just to paint the whole background out blue, remark the lettering out, um, and then and then sign write it. But I don't really want to do that because I don't want to actually lose its authenticity. I want to um, cut in around the letters to keep them nice and original. So, you know, to me that is what a restoration is. We're not we're not painting out the old sign. We're literally cutting up to what the other sign writer did, and then and then filling it back in. So, um, yeah, it's a bit slower. It takes a bit longer. Um, but I think at the end of the day is what a restoration is. You know, it would be a lot. Righto. Um, because this one's similar to the other side, we had to etch prime the side of the shed before we put on the, the silver frost aluminium finish or whatever you want to call it. So Gussie at the moment is working with the etch primer. It's a, not the best paint to work with. It dries very quick, so... Um, yeah, you've got to move pretty quickly and try and keep a wet edge. But he's got to do this whole wall with this etch primer. And then once it's dry, we can go back and give it a, a hit of the, um, the silver aluminium. So it has the same effect as, oh, sorry about that, same effect as what's on this side. So it's a bit of work, but um, it looks pretty good once it's done. So that's Angus's job for the next couple of hours. So what we're doing here, we've got a bit of an um, undercoat mixed up, which is basically a white sealer undercoat. I've just put a bit of yellow into it. Um, yellow, as a rule, doesn't cover very well, so we're putting down this undercoat first, um, and then we'll put two coats of top coat on top of this. Um, yeah, this will just make the yellow last a bit longer and cover a bit better, basically. So that's where we're up to. And all this lettering will get done the same, and then we'll top coat it. Righto, that is the yellow undercoat on. We haven't had the best day here weather-wise. It's been pretty fresh, so it's slowed things down a bit. So, um, But yeah, we still made some progress. Anyway, that's now ready to start top coating. So it's a, that yellow is a little bit lighter than what it needs to be, just purely because it's an undercoat. It's a bit of yellow mixed with white. So the next one will be a bit more of a, a golden yellow, I guess you'd describe it as. But... So we're going to hit that with two coats, and then once the yellow is done, we'll top coat all the background colour. Um, and basically that, that one will be right to go. Angus has um, etch primed the bottom half of this wall, and he's just remarking out. You'll see, you can still just see the old texture lines from where we marked out the power kerosene. What he's doing is going along and just remarking it out just to make sure that we see it when we go to put the silver frost on. Um, I'm not game, we were going to start putting a bit of top coat on the bit that he's etched, but I'm just, with the way this weather's looking, it says it's a four to six hour um, period before it's touch dry, and I'm a bit concerned about putting it on now, and if it doesn't dry properly, the, the dew will settle on it, and um, even though it's an enamel, it won't run, but it can make it go a bit funny, so... I think we're just going to leave it for today. Um, I'll push on with a bit, a bit more of that yellow because it's uh, water-based and dries pretty quick. So I reckon we've probably got about another hour here before the, the weather starts to turn and get a bit too cold. So anyway, that's where we're up to. That sign's really starting to pop now. You're not going to miss it when you come in from Narendra down that road there. So anyway, I'll go mix some more paint. I've just given the Vacuum Oil Co the first coat of its um, top coat and as you can see it's a lot more richer, golder colour. So that's how all the yellow writing is going to be. Um, like I said it will get two coats and the Vacuum's only had one. But it gives you a bit of an idea of how it's going to look so. Um, yeah I'm just not trusting this sky. We've been getting little sprinkles here and there and um, yeah I think we're going to call it for the day unfortunately. 
it's just hard this time of year you got late starts you can't really get on site until about 10 o'clock and you got to wait for the walls to dry and all the moisture that settles on them overnight um, and then obviously you got to knock off early too so yeah it's a bit of a limited space this time of year but we'll just do what we can do um, so hopefully if it doesn't rain tomorrow we'll come back I'm hoping to finish this sign um, and finish that background top coat so Gussie's got the bottom half of this wall etch primed and we've just remarked out it was just a bit hard to see the probably still is a bit hard to see the the writing on the wall there the power kerosene but we've gone back through and re-ticked it all in um, so tomorrow all going well he'll start putting the top coat on the bit that he's etched and then keep etching his way up the wall we might bring the scaffold back to make it a bit easier for him but anyway that's where we're up to so far it's um getting there slowly stay tuned catch us g'day everyone we are here in Gamay. we've had actually a pretty good day today um the sun was out and I even got to wear a t-shirt which was nice for a while I've pushed this a little bit later than I normally would have. It's about half past three now and we're just packing up. I was so close to finishing the, the dark blue that I um, I didn't want to stop halfway through. So normally I would have pulled up stumps at three. Just because of the dew and the moisture that comes into the air. But we've just pushed on so I hope it doesn't come back and bite me on the ass. But at the moment, I'm calling the one on the right done. We'll, we'll double check it tomorrow morning. Um, it's just a bit in the shade at the moment so it's got no sun on it. But we'll you know, go over it make sure that it's all sweet and we haven't missed anything. But that's about it for that one. Gussie's been busy on this one over here today as well. So the whole bottom oh, bottom third is etch primed and has had uh, the start of the top coat, the aluminium put on it, the silver frost. And he's got the whole top half etched as well. So tomorrow morning when we get here, he's going to jump straight up on the ladder and start putting on the... Um, the etching uh, sorry the frosting from the top and then while he's doing that I'm gonna start painting in the, the power kerosene and the mobile and we'll just work around each other and we'll start putting all that black on so really all that's left for that is to do the silver frost which like I said Angus is gonna do I'll start brushing in the black um, once that black lettering is done we'll paint a red border which will go up that edge there all the way up there across that eave down the other side and then there's a border that will go down and neaten up where the blue runs down there so yeah um like i said it was good to have, have some nice weather today good to see the sun out we haven't had the best run since we've been working on this job but we're almost there i'm not guaranteeing we're going to get it done tomorrow but we'll go very very close if we don't get any rain or bad weather so Fingers crossed, we can um, bowl it tomorrow, but we'll see how we go. Catch us later. Morning, everyone. It is quarter to seven on Thursday, and um, I'm just heading into work to get ready to go down to Gamain and um, look into this mobile sign. As you can see, we've had a real good frost overnight, so I'm a little bit concerned we're going to find painter's run when we get down there, because I did push it that little bit later than I would have liked yesterday. Fingers crossed it dried. The sun was still out a bit, so I'm hoping it all dried in time, but there is a good chance that we could get down there and there could be blue paint run everywhere, which would be a nightmare, and I'd have to second coat it all again, and I don't want to think about it. But anyway, let's get into work and have a coffee, and... Um, as soon as it warms up enough, we're down there. Talk soon. Good morning, everyone. We're back down here in Gamain for hopefully the last day for this job anyway. We're almost done. Um, as mentioned in the previous video, I was a little bit worried that that dew would have, or moisture, dew, whatever you want to call it, frost settled last night and would have made this paint run, but I think we're all good. There's no obvious runs, there's a bit of moisture sitting on it, obviously, because the wall's wet. You can see there, it's all still drying, but yeah, none of the blues run. A couple of little touch-ups I can see we need to do. Now it's in full daylight. But um, yeah, that one's basically done. Like I said, we'll do a couple of touch-ups and 
that one's finished this one here bottom third of the sign has had the silver frost on it so first thing this morning you can see the difference there first thing I'm gonna do is just tick in mark out that power kerosene and start brushing in the black while Angus goes up the wall and starts painting the silver frost in from the top down and I'll just work my way up as he comes down and onto the mobile and then the JF Dunn Agents 4 and then the last thing we'll do is paint the red border up and over the top so fingers crossed we've got an earlier start today it's eight o'clock so um yeah weather provided we'll hook in and let's hope we can get it done but worst case scenario i might have to come back for a few hours tomorrow or saturday morning to finish it off so all right let's get into it before we can even start here we've got to actually get in and get all the moisture that's settled on the wall overnight so we've got to run over it with the chamois quickly just try and dry it off so it's you now we're using water based paint well I am Angus has used enamel but can't have any moisture on there you know you gotta dry it off right oh we're getting ready to put some black on here Gussie's up there finishing the top section off and we've got all this remarked out so it's all been ticked back in so we've got a nice neat edge to work to Time to um, get some paint on. It's a bit hard to see because it's in the shadows, but the power kerosene is now all brushed in. I'm just waiting for Gussie to finish up the bit that he's on and he's going to move up to the top and then I can move up myself and start working on the mobile which you can just see sort of sitting there getting there slowly
we're almost done get it done almost done for another day Gussie's just cleaned up the brushes we didn't quite get there the clock's beating us again basically it's only the red border to go but like I've said in previous videos or previous clips um, once it gets to about three o'clock this time of year we pushed it out a bit harder yesterday but today's not quite as nice as day as it was yesterday so I'm not game to push it especially if red a bit disaster we come back tomorrow and red had run all over that nice silver background but apart from that everything else is done all the blacks finished if you could see JF Dunn agents for mobile power kerosene all known barns dials all good to go so predicted rain tomorrow I'm really hoping it doesn't because I'd really like to get down here first thing knock that red border in do a few touch-ups and call it done we're that close now just a little bit disappointed that we didn't quite get there today but can only do what we can do and we just run out of time unfortunately so there's a bit of a view of what it's starting to look like so you can imagine once the red goes on around up around the eaves and down each side of the mobile sign it's going to tie in with the ones on the right it's going to look pretty smart and um you can see that mobile gas in the distance there we'll have to um have a crack at it some stage too it ties in with the rest of it so yeah it's going to look awesome anyway back again tomorrow hopefully fingers crossed <laughs>